Okay, so we're starting set theory today. Um, well, actually, you're going to watch this video. It's in the set theory notes. One of the components of Math 30-2 is that we also look at logical reasoning, uh, so puzzles and games and that sort of thing. So the first lesson in this unit is actually the logical reasoning. Um, you may notice that on the unit test there was a logical reasoning question um, because those will show up on the diploma. So it's to give you some practice and give you some kind of skills for how to approach them. Uh, as always in the note package there's some need to knows, things you need to know, give, fill in an example, use this as a study guide. And then you also can do some self-assessment. So we're doing topic one today. So some things to ask yourself, uh, whether or not you can determine and explain a strategy to solve a puzzle, verify a strategy to win games, analyze puzzles and games that involve numerical and logical reasoning. Those of you who like to do things like Sudokus and other kinds of puzzle games, or if you like to play a lot of games, uh, that sort of thing, then you should be all good for this. But it doesn't hurt to have some strategies. And uh, again, you can kind of say whether or not you know it or not. Okay, there's also some definition pages, which is always good to fill in after we do our notes. They don't relate to today's lesson so much, but they will as we go on. So topic one is logical reasoning. And the goal is to analyze puzzles and games that involve numerical and logical reasoning using problem solving skills. So consider the following game that uses three different shapes, triangle, square, and circle, in three different colors, yellow, pink, and brown. Uh, well, it's yellow, pink, and black to fill a board game. Each of the figures must be used exactly once. Um, so we're supposed to use the clues below to fill in the game board with all nine pieces in their correct position. So clue number one, and here it explains what each clue, what it means, an open shape, indicates the shape with the color undetermined. So that means that we know we need to have a triangle in the middle, but we don't know what color yet. Um, a shade uh, square of the grid indicates the color with an undetermined shape. So clue number two uh, has pink square, black square, pink triangle, and we know there's going to be yellow. Okay, so we have to fill in what we know. So we've got to complete the game board. So first, I'm going to put in what we know already. We know this black square, black triangle, sorry. Okay, we know we have a triangle here. We don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, we also know that we have a, not a black one, but a yellow triangle here. We know that this square will have something yellow in it. We know that this square will have something black in it. And um, I'm going to find a pink. Ooh. We know that um, this square here will have something pink in it. All righty. So now we've got to match things up. Now, we don't know exactly where things fill in, whether or not the, uh, the clue number two is for the bottom or for the top. It could be either one. Um, so we're going to have to kind of figure out, okay, well, exactly where do things go? So uh, it theoretically could be the bottom um, or it could be up at the top, okay? So let's, we just basically have to kind of use that clue and decide where we're gonna put things. Um, if we choose it to be at the top, so I'm going to choose my pink, um, then I would have to put my pink triangle here, and that would mean my, or sorry, my pink square here, as per this, and my pink triangle here, right? Uh, and then that would also mean that the yellow 
triangle would be in the middle because of where that blank is, okay? Um, and then I would have a black square here. So basically I'm just following the pathways. Now I know the colors of the three on the bottom, but now I have to figure out the shape. Well, I've used all of the um, squares and triangles, but I haven't used any circles yet. So that would make this a black circle right this a yellow circle and this a pink circle so let's color them in i'm gonna try and do some erasing and see if i can get rid of some stuff on the outside of those circles and let's see if i can find my pink again i sure can and then we'll color in our pink circle there now there was another way we could solve this one, but this is an appropriate way based on the clues that we were given, okay? So the idea is just taking the two clues, using those problem solving skills to kind of fill it in. We weren't given any other limitations in terms of, oh, you can't have two triangles or two squares in the same room. We just were told that we have to use each shape at once um, and each color the three times with, that match up with the shape. So just using the clues to solve the problem. Now, there's lots of different ways that we can solve puzzles. I don't know about you guys, but I am a big puzzle fan. I love doing puzzles. Um, my problem when I go to teacher's convention and I go to math sessions and they give us new pro uh, like math games online is then I go home and I spend three hours doing like Sudokus or um, similar kinds of puzzle solving. Um, I love them. They, my brain just really likes them. Um, and you can start with easy ones, right? And work up to harder ones. Uh, you don't jump into Sudoku extra hard. You start with easy, you move up, right? And as you do that, you get more skills. Now, lots of, there's lots of strategies that you can use. Many you do unconsciously. Um, and they're legitimate. Things like guess and check. So I'm just gonna turn my pen on. Ooh, it's that nice pink, so guessing and check. So I always like to have a pencil when I'm doing my logic puzzles. I don't start them necessarily in pen. I can start them in, in pencil. I can write little question marks instead of like, yes, this is definitely the answer. And then I can check it. You can look for patterns. Patterns come up in games all the time. Um, and try looking for patterns. You can eliminate wrong answers, so cross out the things that don't work. Simplifying problems, working backwards. Working backwards is always a good way as well. And you can develop alternate approaches. There's not necessarily one right way. The neat thing about some puzzles is that you, your brain may approach it differently than mine. And actually, when two people work on a problem, it sometimes goes a lot faster. Um, I don't know if you guys do escape rooms, but that's why it's really cool to have a team because different people will see things differently. My husband and son do escape rooms. They've got a, friends that they go with, and the 15-year-olds the actually come up with different things than the adults and both contribute to it because they see things differently. So, you know, developing different approaches is a really kind of neat thing. We can also use manipulatives. Um, if we were in a real classroom, we might do actually some breakouts, but uh, I'm going to look and see if I can get a similar thing for an online breakout for puzzles, but I haven't found a good one yet. Okay. All right. So some examples. Um, the goal of a two player game is to create a line of four adjacent squares using the same letter to play. Each player takes turns placing their First initial somewhere on the grid, six by six. This is a game you might have played in the car driving. Um, Margaret and Gerda have started playing this game as shown on the grid below. Um, it's Margaret's turn and she determines by she can win by placing the letter M in what row. Now, my strategy for approaching this is uh, to 
actually, I am going to color code things. So, uh, Margaret, I'm going to highlight all of hers pink because sometimes when we look at it differently than the letter, we look at the color, it might help us see a pattern. And remember, they need to get um, a line of four adjacent squares, okay, using the same letter. So let's highlight Gerda in green. It's very Christmassy. Right. So Margaret has done this neat thing where she has lined up two things here and two things there. If she puts a third one here, then Gerda could only block one of her avenues because Gerda would have to block this one and this one. So she's kind of done that neat thing where she's made it, it's like when you play X's and O's and you kind of get the correct thing. So Margaret's strategy by putting the two there and the two there is that she can now have this as her option to make sure that she can win in the next move because Gerda can only block her in one of those two places. So she can guarantee a win by placing a letter in row four, column two. Um, the color coding helps, depends on how you visualize things, but it's really looking for those patterns. Oops. Alrighty. Um, example number two. In the game Hoppers, this object is to have only the red frog left on a lily pad. The rules are the, hop, the frogs may hop in any directions indicated by the lines between the lily pads. Uh, you may only move by jumping over a frog on an adjacent lily pad and landing on the next lily pad. When a frog is jumped over, just like in checkers, it's removed from the pond. On each turn, any one of the frogs may be moved as long as the above rules are followed. To win, you must have the red frog as the only remaining frog in the pond. Okay, so you can hop in any direction. Um, you, can you may move only by jumping over a frog on a adjacent lily pad and landing on the next lily pad. So when you do this, so this frog could jump here and this would remove this frog here. Once you do that though, you kind of leave yourself in a lurch because then you've got three frogs in a row. So you have to figure out a way to uh, give yourself an opening. Um, and I'm trying to figure, watch this game to kind of see exactly what you could do. Hmm. Well, once you did that, if we have our lily pads, let's see what we can do. Again, try different things out. So those are our lily pads, right? So, um, after we've jumped and we've erased this one, then I have frog, green frog on, I don't want black, I want green. Sorry guys. So I've got a green frog here, a green frog here, and I jumped a green frog to this one, right? The red frog is here. Well, after I do that, then I could jump the, the red frog over this one and that one would go away. So I've got a red frog now on a new spot. He's where this guy started. Um, so let's see what we have then. Uh-oh, Mrs. Finley. Okay, so I have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. And let's see after that leaping around what I have left. Well, my red frog now is here. My green frogs are here 
and here. So uh, looking at that one, I can take my green frog and I can leap there and I'm going to get rid of that one. So another one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Where are my frogs? Um, well, I have my red frog here. My green frog, I only have one left, is now here. So all I have to do is take my red frog, jump it over here. And that gets rid of the green frog and I'm left with a red frog. There's different patterns you can try. Uh, the whole idea is that you wanna have the red frog left and you wanna be able to do those jumps, each jump. It's a game, it's a puzzle. Try it out, try different things. So what strategy could you use to help you win this game? You could um, try different strategies. Um, you can try and think about different ways uh, to move your red or green frogs. You also wanna look for openings. Right? Um, in terms of planning ahead, that whole idea of working backwards. Um, if you think about the logic puzzle that was on the unit test that you just wrote, the one about the popsicle sticks, the way I solve it is by working backwards. Um, so I had to think about how many sticks could be left at the end and still have somebody uh, be able to take another move and then working backwards from that, okay? Everybody's gonna have different strategies. Everybody's gonna see the problem in different ways. Um, and it's really a matter of how do you approach it. Um, feel free, it says compare your steps with a partner. So feel free to chat with someone else in the class or your mom or your dad or your brother and your sister especially if you like puzzles, about how they would approach it, okay? All right, next one. Co correct errors in a puzzle. The goal of a particular puzzle is to fill the circles in a grid with the letters A, B, C, and D so that no letters are repeated in any row, column, or set of connected circles. The three entries in the gray circles were given to start the puzzle. Jerome had already completed three entries shown in the white circle, but he made an error, okay? So, and then they want you to identify the error that he made. Now, now we have to think about how we're going to fill this out. Uh, so we can't repeat letters in any row, column, or set of connected circles. I'm lucky because my pen allows us to erase things. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, so what we have to do is we have to kind of look for options, right? Um, and we also might have to move things, right? Now, I'm looking at this. Jerome's puzzle. Oh, I've got to fill this in. Uh -huh. So if this is how, this is how Jerome, Jerome's, no, he's, okay, so he's got the C, B, and D. And we don't know what, which is right and which is wrong yet. Now, according to this, I have A, C, and B uh, across the bottom. So I guess what I'm just going to do is start filling things in. And then if I encounter the error, I got to fix it. So that means this has to be D because I have A, B, and C. This is like a Sudoku, right? So that has to be D. Now that means I have B, A, D, and this would have to be C. So Jerome's error, I can see right away. He put a C in this column here, and that can't work. This would have to be a different term. So that's his error right there, okay? Um, so it was the C in the third row. And this is just working towards 
solving the problem, right? Now the CBD means that this has to be an A because they're connected. So if I have ADC across the third row, this should actually be a B, okay? Now, we've, got, we've found Jerome's error. Um, let's see what else it wants us to do. Why was his entry incorrect? Because the, solving this problem at the bottom with the D here meant that this one here had to be a C. Now, he could, he, well, no, he couldn't have had a different letter, I don't think, there. That could have been a D, I guess. But that was the more straightforward way to approach it. Now, we could solve the whole thing. If I'm looking at this, I've got C, A, B. Is that, uh, yeah, we're completing the puzzles. So C, A, B, so this has to be D. Um, I have B, D. So I either can put an A or a C here and an A or a C here, right? This is how I do it. I like to fill in little placeholders till I know what I'm doing. Um, so <clears throat> I have a C, D here. So this could either be an A or a, well, it can't be a B. So this has to be an A because there's a B there. And that means this has to be a B there. So sometimes it's like seeing what happens first, second, third, in terms of what you're going to fill in. And um, if you're not a puzzle person, I'm sorry, sometimes this is trial and error. Um, so that means if this is A, this has to be C, right? So we put in our C there and we can scribble those out. Uh, I make, when I do Sudoku, I make so many little notes of, well, it could be this one, this one, or this one. So there's nothing wrong with doing that, and certainly nothing wrong when you're doing your diploma on doing that. B, C, A, this one has to be D. We know this is C, so this has to be A. And then that leaves us with C at the conclusion. So sometimes it says, what happens next? What's the next step for your puzzles, okay? And the best way is to try them, okay? So hopefully my procedure was, didn't go too fast. Sometimes I get so excited I do go fast. But it is really applying these kind of possible strategies. Guess and check, looking for a pattern, eliminating possibilities, simplifying problems, working backwards, develop, developing alternate approaches, and using manipulatives. I encourage you to print the note package out because it's far easier to do some of these problems if you can write on them. If you're able to write digitally like I can on my iPad, that will work too. But some of these are going to be much easier if you can write them out. Now, there's some practice questions with puzzles and you can try them out. Whole bunch of different practice problems with puzzles. It's good to have that practice. And then after all of those, you can see um, that uh, it's just a matter of um, there's the, the answers are provided afterwards so you can kind of see uh, which how you did have fun with them they're puzzles you don't have to do all of them but having some different ways to approach them it wouldn't be bad okay so take a look at these do these puzzles you don't have to do them all tonight but you could try a few every night just to kind of give yourself that practice for puzzles um, and that's the introduction to this next unit, even though we're